Scott, your reaction, please, to Chairman Powell. So I, I think we just have a little bit of context to put in place here. So first, let's think about how we got to the current setup for the S&P that we're now responding to. And that is we had the market first half sell-off culminating with the mid-June lows. From that point, you got a peaking in interest rates around news that inflation was perhaps plateauing, if you will, precipitated, precipitated a 15% or so rally in the S&P uh, up through that 4,300 level um, a week or so ago. We put out a note at that point suggesting that our 4,200 year on target had been reached. You might want to consider selling into strength around that. But really what it sets up for is we think increased volatility around perceptions of this dynamic between interest rates, earnings growth expectations, and valuations. What you got today pretty clearly was a view that you need to expect at a minimum um, another 75 basis point hike at the September meeting, which is what we city have been projecting. Uh, but also I think the, the important narrative here re relates to this higher for longer interest rate backdrop. And, and that's a, that, I think that's an incremental yeah. area that's gonna get some attention with the offset being that uh, the more aggressive the Fed has to be now in terms of dealing with inflation from a longer term perspective, that's actually a fairly constructive setup. Um, but again, that kind of gets beyond most of our investment horizons at this point. Is everybody in the equity market still on the same page that the Fed is going to hike and keep rates high even if the data start to deteriorate? Because the expectation, the muscle memory from the last few cycles has been data comes in bad, Fed reacts. Are we done with that now? And has everybody got the memo? I think most people have gotten the memo. Now, whether it's sunk in and it's become ingrained in terms of short-term investor behavior, I think is an unfolding discussion point. But I, I think we all kind of understand and appreciate that the inflation backdrop that we're considering right now or and, and in, in investing around is, is novel to most folks' investment um, perspectives. And so I, I do think that, um, I think we have to be prepared for a situation where your terminal interest rates are probably higher than we had gotten accustomed to prior to uh, the COVID circumstance, the pandemic. And it, the implication for that though, and this is what we want to emphasize in terms of, to your point, navigating this going forward, is that in our view, what we're starting to talk more about is that we have to expect lower than otherwise growth on the other side of this. And at the same time, we probably have to expect lower than otherwise valuation paradigm around US equities. Yep. So that's where my attention is going. So I get it. We're of the view that we're mm. likely to see you know, recessionary conditions in the first half of next year. Earnings expectations need to get ratcheted down versus where consensus is currently. Um, but we do think that as we get further into this, that plateauing of interest rates or the perspective of plateauing of interest rates is enough to stabilize the valuations while we weave our way through said recession circumstance. Scott, another conversation to be had other than just the impact of Federal Reserve policy on rates is the impact on foreign exchange, specifically the dollar. It seems like every single person I talk to as of late says the dollar is not done. We have not seen peak dollar strength. How do you factor that byproduct of a hawkish Fed into an equity equation and corporate profit expectations? Well, it's, 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 it's two pronged, right? So what I would say, generally speaking, you know, we look at the dollar direction a little bit differently from an equity lens. We think a falling do dollar is mostly akin to improving investor confidence in the global growth circumstance. And that typically will precipitate a risk on uh, trade within, within the US equity markets. So when you look at a stronger dollar circumstance, which I think is justified based on relative rates and, and other metrics here, um, it raises this issue of, is the U.S. the best house in the global neighborhood? Um, and I, I, I do think that there's that discussion at play. Um, some of my colleagues on the fixed income side have noted uh, ongoing you know, flow of funds from outside the U.S. into U.S. fixed income, despite the stronger dollar. So I, I think there are a few dynamics. Um, much attention gets placed on the uh, translation effect to earnings, we're less concerned about that. We think that gets priced in pretty quickly and, and is a different discussion from longer term growth trajectories. But at a minimum, what I would just kind of fall back on here is that, you know, we'll keep an eye on the dollar. I think net net, a stronger dollar is, is positive for US versus rest of the world. 
um, and a falling dollar on the other side of it actually precipitates a little bit more of a of a risk on trade um, more broadly. 